obviously this is a different approach uh, to take with uh, Rigoletto's. Most often it is done with a pillow or a, a pad that's attached to a t-shirt or as part of the costume. But I think in this case, uh, there are probably perhaps two reasons that I can, I think uh, that Jeff, uh, our director, Jeff Buckman, uh, wanted to approach it from this standpoint was one, he, um, I think, wanted it to feel more real as part of the actual body of, of Mark in this case. And uh, two, he wants to really set the tone and the concept of what Rigoletto is dealing with in terms of his own body um, at the very beginning of the opera and therefore wants the audience to really see the deformity, the hump, uh, in a real way as opposed to hidden under a costume. So. Um, I think those are probably the two reasons to approach it this way, and it will be interesting to see how it works. Yeah, <clears throat> he talked about one scene where he wants Jill to, to be washing me uh -huh. with, with my hump, with, with my your hump, hump exposed, yeah. and her reaction to me, as opposed to the servant's reaction uh -huh. to me, where the servant is it's more um, uh, uh, put off by it, where she's yeah, accepting. I'm to think of the, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I don't think a whole lot. Of Prosthetic work has been done in opera to begin with, but also to this extensive covering of the body, um, especially in Rigoletto. And I think audiences in the theater a lot have a problem with suspension of disbelief. And if you give them this realistic look, that it'll help make the, the Rigoletto character more real to them, and it'll bring it will bring opera more into the 21st century. So uh, to make a live cast, what we had to do was uh, prep the performer, we, um, put a ball cap on him and stick his hair back, and we uh, put a uh, some sort of cream, like a Nivea, Nivea face cream all over his body, and worked the Nivea face cream into all his body hair, so that when we were putting the plaster or the alginate on, that it would not stick to him, it would release fairly easily. We put layers of plaster bandages over his back and created like a, a, a seam here. And then we mixed up alginate, which is sort of like this uh, mold capturing uh, gel that uh, has, has a s probably about five to eight minute set time. And we mix that up and we smear that all over his face. And then once we had that on, we put more plaster bandages over that. Once we had this together, we put the one piece So, another piece like so, and we filled the inside with a hard plaster, and once that's set and hardened, we have this finished live cast in front of you that we just have to clean up and sand down and smooth down so we can start sculpting uh, clay to create the prosthetics on top of it. Because of the wear and tear that's going to go on, because of the extensive natures of this particular appliances, we are going to have to make more than one appliance, just so uh, if something happens, something tears, and the client application of it, you have a backup. Each set will probably only last a couple performances. So let's say out of nine performances or seven performances, he'll probably wear one set every two to three nights, and then a new set. 